What's up, everybody, and welcome in to the Under the Hood podcast. I'm Jonathan Hood. Hope that you had a great Labor Day weekend. Plenty to talk about here on the Under the Hood podcast. A couple of things that's on my mind. Uh, but first, let me just thank everybody for checking out the Cap and J Hood Morning Show. It's available on the ESPN Chicago app. You just need to download the ESPN Chicago app, and boom, it's right there on your phone. Of course, we're on ESPN 1000 in Chicago, but that app is strong. So check it out, the ESPN Chicago app. Uh, you can catch our first conversation with Matt Eberflus, the head coach for the Chicago Bears. Good conversation. I just know that he is really locked in on the Bears matchup against the Packers. So he gave us some information today about to who he could be looking at for the backup quarterback for the Chicago Bears. I mean, again, Justin Fields is the guy. He's the one. But who's the two and who's the three? Also talked about just some of the injuries that's been lingering all through training camp and the preseason, all the way up to the game that's going to take place on Sunday against Green Bay. Of course, we are now the home of the Chicago Bears, ESPN 1000. So that's where you can find Jeff Joniak, Tom Thayer, uh, Jason McKee, and the whole crew for Bears football available on the ESPN Chicago app. And, of course, good old ESPN 1000. The Matt Eberflus show, though, interesting. We could, we're really looking forward to talking to him every week about what's going on with the Chicago Bears team. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent. We'll talk to Matt Eberflus about that. I want to take time to talk a little bit about um, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders. It was really the story of the Labor Day weekend in which the number 22 team now in the country, Colorado, was able to win over TCU by the score of 45 to 42. Now, the reason I want to talk to you about this is because it's a big story, and I'll tell you why it's a big story. So I grew up watching Deion Sanders. I grew up watching a guy that was brash and bold and brazen, a guy that um, would tell you, hey, I'm the best. And you talk about the glitz and glam of the 80s into the 90s. I mean, that's who uh, Deion Sanders was. It was amazing to watch him because you say this little guy's got so much confidence. Well, he was very good, one of the best in the NFL. And then he was able to parlay what he did for football into baseball. He played baseball and football uh, at the same time. And we saw Bo Jackson do that back in the day as well, but it was just unheard of for – a football player to play baseball at the same time. Could you imagine in the social media era what, what that'd be like? Deion Sanders playing baseball and football. I just think that's just amazing. But I look at this Colorado program, and I, he deserves a lot of credit. There's no question about that. Uh, I can't underscore how important that first game was. In college football, the difference between college football and the NFL is this, is that – uh, in the NFL, some people can get over a, a loss. Some fans can get over a loss. It's like, ah, we lost this game, but we got 16 more. We have still got a shot for the playoffs. In college football, which I love so much, sometimes one loss will just derail a program because if you're not undefeated and you're supposed to be a powerhouse, you could be just out of the mix for the national championship. Maybe you get in with one win. Uh, or rather one loss, you can't get in there with two losses. Ask Alabama because they tried to get in there with two losses and it didn't work out. But the Colorado program was 1-11 last year. Deion Sanders comes from Jackson State. And the reason why he coached Jackson State is because no D1 program gave Deion Sanders a chance to be able to be the head coach. And you say, well, you're not supposed to hand out jobs. Well, they do it in other sports. You know, they did that for Bob Brenly who was a broadcaster, then became uh, a manager in baseball. They did that for Steve Kerr. They did that for Derek Fisher. They did that for Doc Rivers. It's happened before in sports where someone who's just really uh, knowledgeable about the game all of a sudden gets an opportunity to be a uh, head coach or a manager. And for Deion Sanders, for some of the, some programs that have been dead on their ass in college football, they still said, nah, Deion, we don't want that in our program. So he went to an HBCU. and so. There's a lot of people that looked at Deion Sanders as uh, this brash personality, bold, black. We don't want that in our program because they want to have a serious football person or someone with experience or who is a coordinator. And you can hire whoever, whoever you'd like. But he went to an HBCU and turned Jackson State around to the point where they became a household name. They're not even Division One; They're HBCU in a conference that really – needed a, a, a little bit of a thump and needed some, 
attention and needed some uh, people to be able to look at HBCUs and say, you know what, this is good football too. Deion Sanders were able to bring that to, to the table, and that team won. And then he left Jackson State, and now he's with Colorado, a team, again, dead. And so what he did is that he brought in 90 new players, which is unheard of in college football, right? Turned it over. 90 new players, 58 transfers, came to play for Colorado. And so I know that there are some coaches and probably some college football uh, analysts look at this. It's like, oh, this is a joke. You can't have this. You know what Deion Sanders has done? Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, he has changed the game. He's changed the game to the point where I'm sure there will be other programs that will look at this and say, boy, if this is successful, then maybe I should do this myself. Because here's where it is now in college athletics. Here's where we are. We're in a position now that we can look at college football or college basketball and say it's going to turn over every year. You know, like the Calipari teams with Kentucky or some of the teams that we've seen in college basketball where there might be six new players. You guys got to keep recruiting over and over and over again. And the same thing here with Colorado. There's been longtime players of Colorado, the legacy players that were kicked off the football team because Dion and his staff didn't think they were good enough. They wanted to bring in their own players and set up their own shop. To the, to the tune of a 45-42 victory against TCU, the runner-up for the national championship last year. Not the same TCU team, but the point is, is that Colorado goes on the road, hostile environment, and goes to TCU, and you say, well, what's that program? Well, I mean, the program was in good shape. And so Colorado goes in there and wins a win on the road from, a, I guess, a top 25 team the first time in what? 25 years, 30 years, and he wins. Now, the reason why there's been so much hype is like, oh, my God, look what Deion Sanders has done. Well, I saw what Deion Sanders did at Jackson State, and it was covered some but not covered enough about how important it was where the HBCUs don't have the funds, they don't have the money to be able to you know, get the type of athlete that they want. The facilities are horrible in a lot of those uh, HBCUs, and he was able to try to help turn that around at Jackson State to the point where the team was winning, and they had uh, 60 Minutes and other um, TV shows in there to be able to look and say, look at what Coach Prime has done, and look what his players have done. I just think that it's a great story because there's a lot of people that are trying to count Deion Sanders out because he's not Nick Saban, because he's not Dabo Sweeney, because he's not Kirby Smart from my school, Georgia. But the point is, is that when you take a look at a celebrity coach and that what that's who he is, he already turned one program around. Why can't he turn down turn around Colorado? They play Nebraska coming up. And so that could be a win, could be a loss. But the point is, though, is that at least there was a major story amongst all the blowouts in college football. And I, if you guys know me, you know how much I love college football. But there was a lot of blowouts, but at least that story had an exciting finish, 45-42, with Colorado with the win. But I just want to make sure it's very clear that when people look at Deion Sanders, look at Prime Coach Prime, and they say, "Ugh, Coach Prime must be the money. The guy used to have the, the slick hair and, and the, the, the big smile. You know what? That's who he's always been. He's always been that. And so that swagger, that confidence now is instilled in his players. Here's the thing that's that's not talked about with Coach Sanders. Deion Sanders is doing all of this in press conferences, sitting up there almost like a preacher and being able to, you know, kind of do what he's done as a player. Because it takes the it takes the heat off the players. When he sits up there for 30 minutes and says, You guys in the media didn't believe in us and all this, all he's doing is trying to take the 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 glare off the players. And all he wants for them to do is to be able to win. Shadur Sanders, his son, was outstanding. What are his numbers? Um, let's see, 510 yards and four touchdowns for Sanders. Crazy game. It could have went either way, but it went Colorado's way. So hats off to Coach Deion Sanders because that was the story of the weekend. It was fun. And I'm not saying that I'm jumping on board of being a Colorado fan. What I'm saying is, is that for a – college football landscape that's bereft of black coaches and not really given an opportunity. And, you know, for those of you in the band to say, well, you know what, you just hire who, who's qualified. It, there's So there's plenty of pl uh, coaches, position coaches around college football that should have a shot to be a head coach. Deion Sanders made his own path. He said, okay, no one's going to hire me. I'll go to HBCU and then work my way up. And here he is right now. I won't even tell you that this will be a successful season for Dion. 
But one thing I will tell you is it's been a successful start. It's already paid for itself. Whatever money he's making, whatever he's got NIL money, whatever he's done, 90 new players, 58 transfers. If you're wondering if Deion Sanders is in this whole thing sustainable, just keep watching. Because if nothing else, he'll run his mouth and he'll let you know how special he is or his players are, or his program is, and it's worth watching. It's uh, it's very, very interesting to see for sure. And his players came to play. Defense eh, needs a little work, 45-42. But it was the first game on the road, big spot. They win the game. I want to thank everybody that came out. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Schaumburg, you may not know, over the weekend. If you listen to um, ESPN 1000, I uh, – doing a lot of commercials for All Elite Wrestling. They came to town. They had a show on Wednesday at the Now Arena in uh, Hoffman Estates. They had several shows at the United Center. And then in the middle of that was a wrestling convention called StarCast. S-T-A-R-R, now I misspelled, two R's, cast, like Starcade, like the big pay-per-view they used to have uh, in the 80s uh, for, um, for the National Wrestling Alliance. Boy, that was fun because I was able to meet my partners, um, Gabe Nigel and uh, Brian Rowett, we did the show uh, from the Hyatt in Schaumburg. We did several shows from there, Saturday and Sunday, and we had some listeners come out. If you're not a wrestling fan, cool. But if you know of someone that is a wrestling fan, make sure they check out Good Karma Wrestling, available on uh, podcasts and, of course, on YouTube as well, youtube.com. Look for uh, Good Karma Wrestling. If you watch on YouTube, you see on the bottom here I have – it's. Uh, my link tree, it's link tree backslash J hood radio again, link tree, um, and backslash J hood radio. And the reason why I have that uh, on the scroll here on my YouTube page, youtube.com, uh, look for uh, J hood radio. The reason why I have it on my YouTube is because it's got everything, it's all, all the partners we have, like uh, Illinois Media School and Midas and um, Heartside Realtors, but also it's links to all my podcast, wrestling, Cap and J Hood, everything else. So follow my link tree, and any way you can be able to subscribe to your device, uh, linktree.com slash J Hood Radio. You Google it, it's right there. It's all there for you. But thanks, everybody, for coming out to to, to uh, Good Karma Wrestling. For us to have kind of a remote broadcast, a lot of the people we talked to from the wrestling's past and present uh, came on our uh, Good Karma Wrestling show from the Hyatt and Schaumburg for StarCast. So it's all there. The podcast is there. We had a great time. Thanks so much for coming out. Um, uh, one other thing. I had someone stop me in the street on Tuesday uh, Tuesday morning asking me, he said, Hey, Jay hood, well, what's up with this white Sox team? I go, they're unwatchable. What do you mean? What's up with the white Sox? He goes, I can't, I can't watch him. Jay. I can't watch him. I was like, yeah, there's a reason why you can't because they're terrible. <laughs> they're, they're terrible. And for those that don't believe that, um, Pedro Cafal, uh, is not coming back. I'm here to tell you, he's going to be back next year as the manager for this white Sox team. There's no doubt that that's going to happen. Um, this team is in flux. Um, they just got swept just over the weekend here. Uh, they play Kansas City coming up. They played poorly against Detroit. That's like it's it's hard to watch. And it's funny because I was watching Jake Berger on an interview with Dan Levitard and Stu Gotts on Metal Arc Media. I was watching him. And I saw the big smile on Jake Berger's face. He couldn't be happier to be out of this outfit, being out of away from the White Sox, the Miami team that could make the playoffs this year, the Miami Marlins. So I just, you know, it's just it's a mess. Chris Getz, who I like, who I've talked to, if you guys remember my old Under the Hood radio show, Chris Getz would come on maybe a couple of times a year to talk about the minor league system for the White Sox. And so we've been able to we've had conversations before, but just the fact is is that he failed up in this spot. Uh, he may not be solely responsible for the minor leagues, but what I'm telling you is, is that, uh, you know, he was part of it and uh, it's just bad. <laughs> the whole thing's bad. What's good about Chicago baseball is uh, the Chicago Cubs. They're on a roll here and they are more than likely going to make the playoffs here unless they just slip slide away in September. Uh, this baseball team has some magic to it. It's not the full magic that you've seen from teams. It's like, well, anything they do, everything they do, it turns right. But for the most part, a lot of things have gone right for this team, including Justin Steele, a guy that probably should be in the Cy Young conversation. Uh, he has been really, really solid for the Chicago Cubs and, and for my partner, David Kaplan, I know that he's happy that he's seeing good baseball. He's been up and down the team all season. I did, I thought that 
if the Cubs go to the playoffs or a year early, it looks like that's going to be the case just based on how they're run, they're playing right now. Um, but I mean, Cody Bellinger is worth every dime. If they need to resign that guy next year, I'm not turning the page on the Cubs. I'm just saying like, there's a guy here as a catalyst for that Cubs team. He's been very good. The starting rotation is not exactly what you would want, but it's good enough for sure. You don't have like five aces in there or four aces. You got guys that are innings eaters. You got a solid enough bullpen and you've got, some some magic in the bats to be able to extend endings or to be able to come from behind and win some games. It's it's a it's a really solid season for the Chicago Cubs. They just have to hold on, get in the playoffs, and then see what happens. I'm not making any guarantees. What I'm saying is is that they've played some really good baseball and they've gotten some they, they're winning series. That's all you can ask for. Just keep winning series, and the Cubs have been able to do that for sure. Um, I'm going to, on these podcasts, by the way, give you uh, something to watch. I still like my cable TV or uh, to be able to look at certain shows, um, whether it's Amazon or Prime Video or whatever. I don't know if you guys have watched this, um, but I've been into it for the, uh, I guess, the last couple of weeks. Um, so it's AMC's Dark Winds. That's the name of the show, Dark Winds. Check that show out. I'd love to get your uh, feedback on it. And if there's a TV show, whether it's on one of your apps or on cable that you think I should be watching, uh, let's keep our eyes on that. I still love small screen. I know people can quote movie lines left and right. That's never been me. Uh, uh, I can always tell you, I can tell you about certain TV shows and what uh, network they've been on. I've done that before on the show that irked cap. He goes, how do you know so much about small screen TV? I said, that's my thing. I'm not, I like movies. I don't uh, love movies. Uh, like some do, like they just go like our producer, Shay Norling loves to go to movies three, four times. Like that's not me. I like the small screen over the years. And so I still like certain shows and, uh, dark winds has been really good on AMC. So check that out. That's my uh, suggestion to you. You give me a suggestion back here on the under the hood podcast. Thanks so much as always for checking it out. Just some things on my mind that I want to bring your way. Um, We'll have Bears content on here pretty soon. And by the way, if you have subscribed to this YouTube, make sure you share it. Tell people. J Hood is on YouTube. YouTube.com, of course, the podcast as well. Wherever you get your podcast, look for Under the Hood. So long, everybody.